We'll come to that in a bit. Let's first tell you what the news is. The second disappointment in seven months, India's space research organization ISRO has lost contact with GSAT 6A. It's recently launched communication satellite. But could this be a case of sabotage is the question many are asking and here's why. In fact, uh, ISRO's achievements uh, have been tremendous from a Mangalyaan, a space probe orbiting Mars since 2014, to its PSLV satellite launch vehicle, which is fast emerging as a popular and cheap, quote-unquote, ferry service for satellites belonging to many other countries. Indians have much to be proud of. So even if GSAT 6A is given up as a technical failure, we'll soon be over it. But was it really a glitch is the question we're asking. Are there saboteurs out there who are capable of jamming communications between satellites and ground controls, like, say, hostile countries determined to abort India's space efforts? It isn't impossible. A survey by U.S.-China Commission reported that in 2008, 10 years back, hackers in China had attacked two U.S. military satellites, Landsat 7 and Terra AM-1. The pirates controlled the two satellites together for a total of 14 minutes. Now, that's a long span of time when it comes to top sensitive communications. It's been 10 years since that space war, and it is feared that hackers would have only gained greater expertise by now. Some experts say that it's not easy. Jammers of satellites are not difficult to identify. And besides, the enormous amount of power needed to jam a satellite, satellite that's about 5 billion watts, 5 million watts, I'm sorry, is prohibitively expensive. It may be that for hobby hackers, but not so for hostile governments endowed with deep pockets and geostrategic ambitions, you know what we are arriving at. The GSAT 6A that is still orbiting in healthy, if silent condition, was not any ordinary communication satellite. It was a crucial satellite with both civilian and defense applications. ISRO is still trying to restore contact. One thing all scientists agree upon is that existing communication systems are not hack-proof. There is every possibility of it having been, been hacked. There's some good news, though, for gloomy space enthusiasts and worried defense strategists. ISRO is working on satellite networks for secure, quote-unquote, quantum communications. That is a kind of a safety network for a given country's satellites, which employs an aspect of quantum mechanics to ensure inter-satellite and ground communications. China has already pioneered quantum communications, but when India does, its own sensitive pies in the sky will no longer be in danger of attacks from pirates in outer space, most of whom live in India's immediate neighborhood. As of now, scientists at uh, the Indian Space Research Organization are desperately trying to establish communication with the $41 million GSAT 6A. It was for the exclusive use of the armed forces, as I said, with a clutch of ambitious launches scheduled for this year. ISRO needs to find out what went wrong with this one? Is the Indian Space Research Organization hair splitting when it says the GSAT 6A mission launched on Saturday is not a failure? In ISRO's view, the problem lies not in the satellite but in the communications link which ISRO's mission control is trying to re establish. Communications was lost when the command was given for moving the satellite to its final orbital slot. Senior ISRO officials said communications is linked to power failure. Power failure prompts the satellite to go into safe mode. Safe mode is to avoid further damage to the satellite. Power failure can also trigger other problems. ISRO chairman K. Sivan appeared confident things would work out. He said, quote, we're going through the data meticulously to establish a link with the satellite. Our team is continuously trying to establish the link." Unquote. The mishap is the second in seven months after a replacement satellite for the regional space-based navigation system failed to eject from the heat shield. An investigation found that a controlled explosive failed to detonate and break the latch that locked the satellite to the heat shield. The latest mishap also seems similar to the loss of link with the Angosat-1, a communication satellite launched by Russia in December last year for the Republic of Angola. But communications was later restored and the satellite was gradually moved to its final orbiting position. 
GSAT 6A is intended to provide high-speed internet access on mobile devices for the armed forces. If ISRO is not able to get it back on track, the armed forces will have to wait until a successor satellite is deployed, which could take time. Could the incident set back other launches for this year? Top scientists dismiss those fears. In the next few months, ISRO will launch another lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2, the next generation of remote sensing satellites, Cartosat-3, a geo-imaging satellite, GSAT-1, for spatial resolution from 50 meters to 1.5 kilometers, Oceansat-3, to study ocean colors and measure temperatures, radar imaging satellite, RISAT-1, for data collection in agriculture, forestry, etc., and at least 250 other satellites, Indian and foreign. But ISRO needs to know and understand what went wrong with GSAT 6A. Was it a technical glitch, a human error in programming, or faulty components? For its future success, ISRO needs to find out what happened. Bureau Report, we are. In 1981, India's space scientists transported a homemade satellite on a creaky wooden bullock cart to the launch pad. We have admittedly come a long way. Three decades on, India has launched more than 100 satellites into orbit from a single rocket. In 2014, it successfully guided a satellite to an orbit around Mars, becoming only the fourth country in the world to do so. In 2008, India launched its first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1. Along the way, India has tested a scaled prototype of its own space shuttle and is now preparing for another moon mission which will involve landing a remotely operated rover on the planet. India's dual-use satellites, Cartosat and Technology Experiment satellites, have served both civil and military applications. India ranks among the top 10 countries most active in space. So are there any other lost satellites apart from the current one? Plenty. There's Chandrayaan, with which India lost contact uh, in 2009, but it was tracked down by the U.S. using a powerful radar. It is about 200 kilometers above the moon right now in a polar orbit. In 1957, the Russians launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. And since then, it has been estimated that at least 2,500 satellites have been put into orbit. Some of them are lost. How many are lost is harder to figure out because these include military satellites such as the American Zuma, launched in January this year by the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. It's not clear what happened. It's not clear if there was a problem with the second stage booster, which SpaceX denies, if there was a problem with the payload adapter that separates the rocket from the satellite. That was made by Lockheed Martin. It's not even clear if Zuma drifted off into space or if it burnt up while in a controllable descent to Earth. We don't know what happened with it. There's the other case of the U.S. space agency, NASA, which launched an imaging satellite back in the year 2000. It lost contact with it in 2005. Thirteen years later, an amateur astronomer picked up signals from the satellite and it is now being examined remotely to see if the science instrument can be turned on. It's still a mystery as to how it began transmitting after so many years of quiet. And mystery does surround the disappearance of Russian satellites, Phobos 1 and 2. Phobos 1 was lost after a faulty command error. Phobos 2 sent back pictures of Mars before all contact was lost. Japan's Hitomi satellite mysteriously disappeared in March 2016. It was tracked with five objects around it and then it vanished. They, they clearly have their own mind. As technology improves, it will become easier to track and locate lost satellites. Space scientists consider this important given that manned flights to distant planets are being planned for future. Meanwhile, here's one that has come back, not a satellite. China's Tiangong space station burnt up over the middle of the South Pacific after it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere earlier today. According to Chinese state media reports, the spacecraft re-entered the atmosphere around 8.15 a.m. Beijing time and the quote-unquote vast majority of the craft had burnt up upon re-entry. The 10.4-meter-long Tiangong-1 was launched in 2011 to carry out docking and orbit experiments as part of China's ambitious space program. This program aims to place a permanent station in orbit by 2023, about five years from now. It was originally planned to be decommissioned in 2013, but its mission was repeatedly extended. 
the bigger issues right now is the things in space that we do not have control of. Uh, so in 2009, we saw the first crash between a defunct satellite, a Russian Cosmos satellite, and a U.S. Iridium satellite phone communication satellite. That was the first crash between two satellites. And so as these things are floating around, they crash into it, break apart, floating to more things, crash into more things. So the real worry is all this stuff floating around, running into other stuff, which could potentially cause this runaway effect. Uh, and limit the potential launch of future satellites.